Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And in today's episode, Andrew and I are talking about martial arts and artificial intelligence, the benefits. Uh, which direction do we mean? Both. We're going to talk about a variety of different things that you will find interesting as we look into the future, as we talk about AI, as it relates to being a martial arts school owner, and a whole bunch of other things. No matter no matter who you are, AI is going to impact nearly every part of your life, but that also includes your martial arts lifestyle. So stick around. If you're new to what we do, go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that we're working on and use the code podcast15 to save yourself 15% in our store on apparel or a training program or protective equipment or any other number of things. So Andrew, AI, of course, means artificial intelligence. And Mm -hmm. we were talking before and you've got very little experience with the AI tools that are out and available now. I've, I've played around with chat GPT, like sure. a small amount, but that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, and many of you out there know that the, as, as whistle kick grows and as we get closer to profitability, I've had to pay bills and how do I pay bills? Well, I have a consulting firm and that consulting firm does work with a variety of martial arts schools, but not entirely. I'd, I'd say just more than half our martial arts schools. There are a variety of clients and industries from tech startups to uh, human and animal medicine and and all over the place. And I am using AI in some form or another often for nearly all of them. Mm -hmm. And of course you mentioned chat GPT, the tool that kind of set the world on its, on its head once people learned about it because it worked. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, AI has been around for a long time and, you know, we, we often act like chat GPT was the first thing to come out of the gate, but it was really just the first one that caught fire. Yeah. And that's just a, a tip to those of you out there who, who might be starting businesses, uh, just cause you're, your first doesn't mean that everybody will catch on. It sounded like I, would, I cut you off at the end. I apologize. No, no, that. no. Oh, okay. No, no. Chat GPT it's it's become huge. It's the one of the yeah. reasons that the Screen Actors Guild is on strike right now. I mean, it's yep. it, it's 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 huge, and and I don't know that it's going to go away. It, it's not AI is here to yeah. stay. Yep. Um, you can we we could what, what we're not going to talk about today. We're not going to talk about much about the ethics. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, that's a whole different conversation and it's also a very personal conversation. So, you know, you acknowledged that SAG-AFTRA is on strike because of AI, a number of other reasons, but it's a really fast way to generate content. We experimented with AI generated content. In fact, there are blog posts at whistlekick.com that I generated with AI because I wanted to see if I could, I wanted to see what happened. Um, I can turn out some rather low quality content very quickly. And you know, that, that that's a bit of foreshadowing to what we're going to talk about as it relates to martial arts school owners. You know, can you, should you use AI to do that, to build a website? But if we look at the, probably the second most popular tool out there, mid journey, which is an AI graphics generator, you may have seen some things out there. We've, we did some, uh, we experimented with some Facebook ads that used mid journey images in them. And I've used mid journey to generate some, some graphics for some other projects. And it's interesting, Mm. right? So most of what we're going to talk about is going to be in the direction of students and school owners utilizing artificial intelligence in a martial arts way. Yeah. But because that's where we're going to spend most of our time, I want to go the other direction. And how is AI going to benefit from martial arts? And I've kind of got to shoehorn this in, but I, I think you'll see what I'm talking about in, in a moment. Well, no, I, I guess it's not quite that direction. Here's the first thing I wanted to talk about. How is martial arts itself going to benefit? from AI. I, I've, I've got something that I can see coming and I'm, I'm curious if you have any ideas, Andrew, before um, I stomp I mean, on the conversation. The, the graphics aspect, I think 
is easily something that martial arts schools can use in their marketing or whatever. Right. Like, well, that's how, you know, not, how are martial arts? Yeah. Like, like you asked me, like, how do you think that that's one way? So not, I don't mean martial arts schools or martial arts people. I mean, martial arts, the, the thing itself. Oh, oh you mean? Because I, I, I see some, that. yeah, I see something there. Oh, and oh, I have no so, idea. So if we think about how does AI work? And just really simply on a technical level, you have to train it. It's an algorithm that gets trained. Mm -hmm. And what do you train it on? You train it on, I mean, in the case of, of ChatGPT, you train it on a whole bunch of text from the internet. What would happen if somebody generated a fight AI that trained on watching fights? And I don't just mean professional MMA. I mean, uh, security camera footage of fights. What would happen? What would a martial arts curriculum look like based on that? That's interesting. Now, is somebody going to do that? I don't know. I don't have the resources or the time to do that right now, but it's interesting to me because we have said, and we've talked about this on the show, that for, for a number of martial artists, for martial arts schools, watching MMA has changed the way they teach and train and what mm -hmm. they teach and train. Not saying they should or should not, it's not a judgment, but it is an observation. Yep. AI makes those observations at a much grander scale. Mm -hmm. If ev every fight that the UFC has ever done has been videoed. And you can probably say the same thing about K1. You could say the same thing about karate combat. Or pride, yep. Pride uh, and a lot of amateur stuff. What would happen if an AI had the ability to process that video information and look at it and understand the differences. Hmm. What if a video game came out of that? Yeah. Right. Like yeah, there's, you know, what, what if, what if augmented reality became the training platform, augmented virtual reality, right? Like we can see that there's a really interesting direction this could go. And I think eventually it'll get there. Who knows how long, you know, we, we tend to make these predictions that, you know, this sort of stuff is going to happen. It's going to be here in 10 years, probably going to be more than 10 years. But we'll start to see the, the, the doors open on that. And then I think the, the other thing and the reason that we titled it this way, and, and maybe I'm, I'm being a bit disingenuous by saying that AI benefits from martial arts, but the methodology by which AI progresses is very similar to the way we progress as martial artists. Hmm. Observation. It gets, better. it gets better because it keeps working because people keep feeding it information. It's less about, okay, if this, then that, right? Mm -hmm. And, and there, are, there are some contexts in the martial arts that we process that way. I recommend against them because that rarely works well because people can't think that quickly. But if, if we think of ourselves as uh, the term in AI would be a, a um, large language model, right? Like we get fed all of this stuff, right? And we take it and we try to understand it and we try to use it based on certain contexts. That's, that's, it's intelligence yep. in the same way that we're trying to create artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the AI grows as it continues. Um, and, and I know some content creators have used it and, you know, have experimented with it in their videos. Um, most notably that I'm thinking um, Sensei Seth on YouTube um has and he got together with icy mike and did a video on uh they went to chat BG, gpt and said write a fight scene and then they acted it out mm. oh that's uh, really cool and, and how was it, it? Was, it was interesting we, we should it, get that linked in the show notes i haven't seen that okay I, i'll do that um and you know it's interesting it'll be interesting to see if two or three years they do the exact same thing how is it mm. how has it grown um, we're, we're going to end with the school piece because that's the piece that's probably uh, the, biggest, the, yeah. the right now it's the biggest and it's probably the part that is of most value to the most people right because the rest of what we're talking about is, is theoretical that's the part that is actually there and practical mm -hmm. so if we think about it from the perspective of being a student there are a lot of I would say kind of low value ways that you could do this right um we did a, a Q, we recorded a Q and A today that will have already come out. Where yeah, uh, Mark, 
Mark, came out where Mark week. Warner submitted a question about why don't more international films mm -hmm. get watched? You could go to an AI, you know, chat GPT, chat GPT, chat GPT as we're recording, cuts off at sometime in 2021. So we don't have the most recent stuff. But if you asked it, hey, what are some really cool martial arts films that I've probably not seen? It'll tell you. You know, you can you can get in there. You could ask, you know, um, anything that you might say, you know, this would be an interesting research project, mm -hmm. lineage, stuff like that. Chat GPT can probably cut down the time that would be involved in learning or understanding or sourcing what you might want to find out more about next because of the way it works. Right. And I, and I think that that can be really valuable. Um, I could also see if we start to combine AI with technology, you know, sensor-based technology, what if you have, you know, I, I've got this aura ring, you know, if you have some kind of wearable that is also aware of what movements you're doing, uh, the closest thing that is out there right now is Kick AI, you know, shout out to those guys. Uh, Jan Eric's been on the show. And, you know, if we start to combine some of that sensor-based technology, oh, now we can start to look at, well, what would, what would happen to my heart rate if I did this, these moves in this way? What would happen to my heart? You know, so maybe there's even a digital coach, an AI coach that says, you know what? Um, I want you to do that form again. And it, from your heart rate, it seems like you're holding your breath at this stage. That's something that on a technical level is pretty straightforward. Yep. So there are a lot of things right like that that I think could be really cool. And, you know, over the last few years, we saw that far more people are willing to train and teach remotely, you know, over Zoom or something. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of pieces that get lost there because you're not in the same room with someone. If, if, if you and I are training together, I might hear you hold your breath. I might be able to tell that you hold your breath, mm -hmm. but if we're training over zoom, I'm going to have a much harder time doing that. Yeah. yeah. But if, if I have a readout or you have the readout that says, Hey, you're probably holding your breath here, fool. That, that makes that distance learning even more, even closer to the real experience. And then we start to add virtual reality, which is really close. Uh, Sensei Seth did a, a video on fighting. Mm hmm He's done a few. Fighting with VR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, the stuff is here. The pieces are here. They're just, they just need to be put together. Uh, that was the other thing I wrote down. And how about the other piece of what you should spend your time working on? Mm. You know, it, let's, let's say you're getting ready for your black belt, right? You know, this is a common situation. You're getting ready. You've got six months or 12 months or 24 yeah, months yeah. or whatever it is. And quite often people will have a, um, a huge syllabus to work from. You know, they've got to know these forms. They've got to have these competencies and these techniques. And knowing what to spend your time working on can be pretty tough. What if there was an AI that said, okay, what are all the things you got to know? And you feed it. In. So, okay. Uh, how good are you at this? How good are you at that? How good are you at this? Mm -hmm. When is your test? And it gives you home practice routine. A lesson plan, basically. A lesson plan, and it keeps you accountable. That, on a technical level, is actually pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that, you know, some people wouldn't call that an AI, but it, it's, it, it is because it's feeding in information. It's processing that information per an algorithm, and it's generating something that is, uh, that does not currently exist. That, that's kind of my definition of where AI falls. How many people out there are going, oh, wait, can you make that? I, I can't make that. But how cool would that be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We we've all we've all said, and, and I think we all know that home training is is important. You know, if you want to progress, if you want to be the best you can, you've got to do stuff at home. But sometimes it's what do I spend the time working on? What do most people spend the time working on? The stuff they like the most, which is exactly. probably the stuff they're the best at. Yeah. yeah. So and having even if it's they should probably be spending more time working on the stuff they don't like because they're less yeah. good at it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, is there anything that that might have brought to mind for you before we go on and talk about? No, that all makes that all that stuff makes sense for sure. Okay. 
And, and I, frankly, I'm excited for that stuff. I think it'll be a heck of a lot of fun. Hmm. So let's talk about the more common use cases right now for AI, you know, being in business. Yeah. AI is often thought of in, in this current iteration as being beneficial really only for marketing. You can generate text with ChatGPT. You can generate images with MidJourney. And, and that, those are the tools I'm most familiar with. We're not going to give you a list of tools because by the time you watch or listen to this, the tools will have changed. Yeah, there'll be new ones. It is a rapidly evolving. I was at a conference this weekend and the, the lecture about AI, which is part of why I wanted to do this. The gentleman was saying there are 150 new AI tools rolled out every week. I believe it. Wow. Yeah. Most of them aren't great. They're figuring it out, right? The AI is AIing. It's what's yeah. supposed to happen. And if you were there at the early versions of ChatGPT or Midjourney, you know what I'm talking about. Those, those tools have progressed massively in a very, very short period of time. So marketing. Um, Anything that you have, that you have to do, that involves you sitting and typing, can probably be made either faster or better by using AI tools. So here, here's one. So um, I've got this, I'm gonna bring this up now, where I'm gonna ask ChatGPT for some potential podcast episodes we could do. You know, because Andrew, that's one of the things that we talk about. Is sometimes we go, well, you know, we keep a list. Yep. Yep. But, but while I'm doing that, tell people kind of like our process with that, and they can see the difference. Yeah. So I mean, essentially, I have on my phone uh, a, a note that I just constantly throw ideas and stuff down, and you know, sometimes I'll be you know out and about talking with friends, often about martial arts stuff, and they'll say, oh yeah, that would make a really good episode. You guys should do that, and I'll go, oh, you know what? And maybe it's not fleshed out enough. Maybe it's just a, a, a thought and I'll just, I'll go open my phone, go open the note and I'll throw it down and it gives me time to percolate on it more. And, and I check that notes page every, you know, every week or so to see what's on there to see if there's anything that just to keep my mind thinking about things. And then when we get together and record, I, I'll open it up and I'll say, all right, this is what's on the list. And there are things that have been on the list for months. We, you know, some of them require another guest and we haven't found that guest yet, um, but it's on the list. And so we're, we're just constantly throwing stuff on the list. That's all. So I've, I've done this exercise before. So I, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of liberty here and, and leaving something out. I'm, uh, the screen. Yeah. So here we are. And what I've pre-fed in is what are some great topics to be explored on a podcast focusing on traditional martial arts training? And the reason I, I framed it that way is I know from past experience, because I've, I've messed around with this, it often wants us to talk about people. You know, that's not hard for us to generate. You know, yeah. we, we once a week, we have an episode with a person. So if I hit go, dun, 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 dun. Certainly, a podcast focusing on traditional martial arts training can explore various fascinating topics, including history and origins. It's kind of obvious. Yeah. Techniques and training methods. Okay, that's kind of obvious. Philosophy and mindfulness. Mar Many traditional martial arts emphasize the importance of mental training and spiritual development. Episodes could focus on the philosophical teachings and how practitioners can incorporate them into their daily lives. Self-defense, health and fitness, interviews with masters and practitioners. Even though I didn't ask it for that, it gave it. Cultural connections, mm -hmm. and it's it's still going. But here here's the point: for most of us, when we can do anything, coming up with anything is exhausting. Yep. One of the ways that I use ChatGPT is I'll ask it for a list of things, and I usually don't use them, but it gives me an idea for a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kids in martial arts, equipment and gear, challenges and common misconceptions, right? So there, there's a bunch of stuff there that we could use this for. Now, here, here's one that, you know, I don't, I don't want to have the, the screen time with this, but here's another one that I think a lot of martial arts schools might find value in. Write me a 
calendar for social media posts for a martial arts school where we're posting, you know, three times a week. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, many of the audience know I work with martial arts schools. And the biggest challenge for most of them is the time and energy that goes into, well, what should I post about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So overall, this is the way that I use any kind of text generator like ChatGPT. I need to come up with an idea. I'm going to ask it to give me ideas and I'm going to work from those ideas. Yeah. Okay. Anything you want to respond to? Yeah. And, and it doesn't have to be you use it verbatim. The, right. But and you, you probably list, don't you, want to. And, and it'll give you things to think about. Yeah. Other thing I, I mentioned, I think, at the top that I've used it to generate some blog posts. They're not great. But what I wanted to test was, how are they received? One of the things that you may or may not know is that I'm constantly looking at these metrics behind the scenes on how whistlekick.com performs. And I was curious, what if I very quickly turn out, you know, 10 blog posts on a certain subject? Is Google going to reward us or penalize us? Mm. And it was, it was pretty neutral, yeah. right? Because Google, Google can kind of figure out if it's AI, right? And this is, this is one of the things that is going to become... A bigger subject of conversation in the future is, should AI-generated content rank as well as human-generated content? Mm -hmm. I'm not making a claim one way or the other, but it's something to keep in mind that as new tools roll, roll out, because there, there are already tools that will make you a website. Make me a website for a martial arts school that has, you know, these things yep. done, right? Um, that becomes really interesting. But uh, right now, write your own content. Don't 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 AI don't AI your blog posts unless you need a place to start. Right again, we come back to that starting point. Mm -hmm. Now, other places that you might find some interest. How many times have some of you out there written something and you wanted to use an image, and the image is that you had or found uh, for free on the internet didn't fit? You know, when we talk about martial arts, it's so rare that we have images available that fit the subject that we're talking about. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's where one of the graphics tools comes in. I'm talking about, you know, this manipulation of, of this. Well, I've done some stuff where I've shown cross sections of skeletons, you know, in interesting ways. That's been kind of cool. But I think the other thing to keep in mind is that there's text and there's there's audio or text and, and, and photo but there's also audio and video hmm. and that's where to me ai is in the next year maybe even six months going to become incredibly interesting what would it look like if you took a video of your class you know you filmed a class and you said okay break out the drills with the instruction and give me text so i can send it to the students that weren't there that day interesting you could do that. In fact, you can get kind of close to that now. Wow. Yeah, I had no idea. And so the reason that we don't film every class and break it up and give notes to students who don't attend is because it takes a lot of time. Yeah. But those things that you look at, if you, if you look at something in your business, whether it's a martial arts business or not, and you say, this thing takes me time. Too much time to do it, but it does have value. That's the place you should look for an AI solution. Mm. especially if it's something that you can automate and there are plenty of things that that automate um you know the the one of the things that we haven't talked about is we're, we're using this new platform riverside for our recording is that the text generation is much more intelligent than your simple kind of old school voice to text because the original voice to text did not care what the rest of that sentence was if it thought it heard this word, it gave you this word. And I mean, we've all had plenty of, of uh, laughs over the years with autocorrect in our text messages. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But River, Riverside's text generation had, is far more intelligent. It says, wait a second, you're trying to say this. And I can tell from these words. So even though I thought I heard this, I could also kind of tell where you might have said this. And so I'm picking that word. And we get a better transcript out of it. And that saves us time because we talked about in, I think it was in the Q and A episode, the, the value of those transcripts, 
Yeah. There's value, but it's not valuable enough for one of us to sit down and listen to it and write it word for word. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. It will be interesting to see how much AI changes in the next six months to a year. Um, and maybe even we revisit this topic in a year or two. I, I think we're going to have to. Yeah. I, I really do. Especially if we, if we look at the job that a martial arts school is in. There are two ways I think you can look at AI as it comes in. It's either a tool or it's competition. Yeah. And if you see it as competition, you are going to lose. Yeah. Because there will at some point be a way for people to learn martial arts that initially it's going to say, this is AI. And it won't be, but eventually it will become true artificial intelligence that is teaching people martial arts. But artificial intelligence will never be able to deliver the community and the warmth and the personal understanding and the nuanced detail and that an artificial intelligence and, and empathy yeah. that a martial art, that an AI bot can. But otherwise, what I heard was if you get into a fight with AI, AI is going to win. That's probably true. <laughs> You'll have to watch Sensei Seth's uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Awesome. Anything else? No, no. It's, 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 like I said, it'll just be interesting to see where it goes. Those of you out there in the audience, if you have... Oh, pardon me, I was coughing. If you have follow-up questions, if there are more specifics that you want to go into, there are a number of ways that you can do that. The best way, we have a newer, it's not new anymore, but a newer Facebook page, Martial Arts Radio. Find us there. You can also leave comments on whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And those are the two best ways. But if maybe you've got a question that you want to keep private or something, you can reach out to Andrew or I. Andrew at Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. Remember, you can support us in any way that seems to be appropriate to you. Please consider doing so so we can keep doing this, the show and all the other things that we do. Is that it? I think so. Okay. Until next time. Train hard, smile, smile, and have a great day. I like how you did that.